Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be, my girlfriend is nagging me too much. So I've got an email. This is from a guy. He's been following me for several years, and I think he said he's read the book like two dozen times, which is a lot. He says it's improved his life, especially his dating life, absolutely immensely. But for the past year, he's been dating a woman and... For the first six to seven months, he said things were pretty good. But obviously, like I discuss in 3% Man, when a woman is in love with you and happy, she wants, and assuming she's a normal, happy, healthy woman and not a lunatic, she's going to want your attention all the time. Meaning every spare moment, she's going to want to spend it with you because you're her man, you're her rock, you're her mountain. So this guy where he's running into trouble now is that anytime he wants to do something with his hobbies, his interests, self-help, personal growth, and he doesn't include her or he wants to do something with his friends, she gets really upset and nags him. And the thing that he's concerned about is that he's got several guy friends who've been married and they're married to women who display the same behavior And so these guys have given up their hobbies, their interests, going to the job or going to the gym. And they basically just sit at home in a couch and do whatever their wives or girlfriends want because they don't want to upset them or they don't want to deal with living with a woman who is nagging or mad at them. And because obviously it interferes with their ability to have access to the box. So they end up giving giving up everything. And he's like, these guys are a shell of their former selves and so obviously he's dealing with a woman who's needy and he needs to set and enforce some healthy boundaries but the reality is we don't know if she's capable of that or capable of respecting that and this is one of the reasons why it's so important to not be in such a rush to stick a ring on some girl's finger because things are good for a few months or even a year or two you want to see how things are like for several years because as I've jokingly mentioned in the past, if you are a fan of the Star Trek from the 1980s, The Next Generation, they had an enemy called the Borg, and they flew around space in these big giant cubes, and they would just go around conquering civilizations, assimilating their technology, and they would, when they would show up, they would say, lower your shields, you will be assimilated, we will add your biological and technological likeness to our own resistance is futile and so if you fight them eventually they figure out how to circumvent your shields and your weapons and conquer you anyway and it's kind of funny because women are like that it's when they love you and they are with you all the time and you're in a relationship maybe you're living together maybe you're married they want your attention all the time and they're relentless and the thing that you don't want to have happen like in a situation like this is he sets and he enforces the healthy boundaries and it's good for a few months and then she just slowly keeps on. It's like if you think about it, I mean, we all know guys that are like this. They just get so beat down. They just don't want to upset the wife. They got a 30-year mortgage together. They got a bunch of kids. Guy feels trapped and he just goes along. And she's always miserable and unhappy and complains all the time anyways because she hasn't been put in her place and oftentimes not been given a proper seeing to. So these are the kinds of things. It's like, you know, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you decide whether or not this is a good person to be with long term or if they're just too needy and insecure, you're going to have to move on from them. And so this is going to be a critical thing for this particular guy that he's going to have to set and enforce healthy boundaries and see what happens over the next year or two. Because she was good for the first six or seven months and now she wants his attention all the time and so it's obvious she's kind of needy and this can be a real drag so i got a quote that i wrote and then we'll go through his email and the quote says when a woman is in love with you she wants your attention all the time two happy whole and complete people who have great interesting lives come together to share their completeness not to complete one another it's essential in all healthy relationships that we love in such a way that the other person still feels free to be themselves and enjoy their lives, friends, hobbies, and interests outside of their relationships. However, 
when one or both partners start trying to control the other person and making unreasonable demands that they give up their hobbies, interests, and friends in order to please a needy lover and prevent arguments and drama, this can lead to the end of the relationship. Relationships are supposed to enrich and improve our lives and multiply our happiness, not control, diminish, and restrict our ability to be who we really are. And the key thing to remember is drama-free zone. These sweet mugs you can get at teespring.com, the Coach Corey Wayne store, if you need a helpful reminder on your desk or when you're drinking your morning coffee because it's a way of life and you have to constantly be reminded of this. You really have to pay attention to who you allow into your inner circle. So he says, hi, Corey, how the hell are you? Well, I'm pretty damn good. Thanks for asking. Oh, by the way, since you asked, the new book, Quotes, Ruminations, and Contemplations is out. This is the paperback version. It's available in hardcover. It's on iTunes and Audible format. It's on audible.com. It's available everywhere. Amazon.com for paperback and hardcover, wherever you happen to be. And this giant marble that we're on that's hurtling through the galaxy at thousands of miles an hour. But back to our regularly scheduled email. I've been following you for years, and I've read your book about two dozen times. It has improved my life on every level. Thank you. My current situation relates to a girlfriend I've been with for about a year. The first six to seven months, we got along great. No real issues. Recently, she has been getting increasingly upset if I go and do anything without her. Things that were never an issue before are suddenly huge issues, and the list is steadily growing. Well, you're going to have to have a heart-to-heart with her. Some background, I moved to Colorado a few years ago because I love the mountains and everything with it. In the summer, I mountain bike, hike, and rock climb. In the winter, I ski. I love the outdoors and this state has, the state as it has so much to offer. My girlfriend is not as active as me, but few women I meet are. She increasingly wants more and more of my time. She gets me all weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and several nights during the week. The more she takes of this, the less I have for self-development, building personal relationships with others, and working on my life's purpose. She also is not very outgoing and prefers to only hang out together, never with any friends or other people. You need to put your foot down, dude. And you need to have a talk with her. Next time you're together... You got, or she starts. I would say as soon as you're together next time, you're gonna say we gotta talk about. I wouldn't say it on the phone because if you call a girl or your girlfriend or your wife and you say we need to talk, typically that's the kind of thing that women say to guys that mean hey we I want to break up with you. So you gotta remember how when you say things like that because when I was younger I didn't know better. I was I said hey we need to talk to my just because I want to talk about something and she assumed I was gonna dump her. Because obviously that's typically what that means. So you got to choose carefully some of the words you say. Because then you'll f- freak her out. But next time you're together, you got to say, look, just what you said right here. It's like, I have a problem or we have a problem in that I don't feel free in my life, in our relationship anymore. Because you're starting to smother me and you're getting upset with me. You're nagging me. And I don't want to feel guilty about hanging with friends. I don't want to feel guilty about my purpose and my mission in life. I want you to be my biggest cheerleader and fan and support me in that and not give me grief or get upset or act needy and insecure because I chose to go and do something without you. If we're going to continue to stay together and grow together as a couple, you got to give me the freedom to spend time with my friends, my family get involved in my hobbies and my interests and other things that are important to me because one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to jump through my butt and change myself into a pretzel just so you don't get upset with me that doesn't work for me things were great for the first six or seven months and this you you have a list that continually grows of things that you're not okay with me doing and I have a problem with that and it needs to stop and you're obviously coming off as very needy and controlling and I don't like it and I resent it and it needs to stop. And we're going to continue to date and be in a relationship. You got to let me be me. I give you the same freedom to do what you're going to do. And granted, you're maybe you're not as social. You don't like to, you don't have as many friends. You don't like to do as many things. 
socially and you're not as outgoing as I am, but this stuff's important to me. And you have to let me be me because if you're going to, if you continue down this road, it's going to end with the end of our relationship and we're going to break up because it's not going to work for me. And I'm really not happy with your behavior and you being controlling. I mean, you're going to have to put this into your own words and let her know where you're coming from and what you expect from her and that you, that she respects your boundaries. And it's not going to happen with just one conversation and then it's going to be over because women always test you. And so she'll say, I agree, things will be fine. It might be good for two or three weeks. And then she'll probably revert and start doing some of the same behavior. You're going to say, look, we talked about this three weeks ago. And now you're getting on my case and jumping on my balls again about something that you promised me. You gave me your word you were going to dress and you were going to let me be me. And now you're going back on your word. And I have a problem with that. You have to honor your commitments to me. You can't say one thing and then a few weeks later go back on it. You're creating unnecessary drama in our relationship, and I don't appreciate that. So you're going to have to continually call her out because obviously you're a year down the road, and this has been going on for many months, and obviously you haven't basically put her in her place. And so you're creating a tyrant in your house, and that's no fun. <clears throat> He says, I've noticed <laughs> that the list of things she's okay with me doing is steadily decreased. Meeting up with friends, playing sports, or really doing anything in life without her next to me is getting me nagged to death. Yeah, so when she's nagging, you got to say, look, you're nagging me, and you're coming off as needy, and this is your issue. You need to deal with it, because I don't want you giving me grief every time we get together. All that does is make me want to spend less time with you, and I love you, and I love spending time with you, but if every if half the time we get together you're mad and upset for me living my life the way I was living it before. It's like I'm not giving up these hobbies and interests and I'm not giving up my friends and I'm not giving up my goals and dreams to please you. You're either going to be okay with that or you're not. But I'm certainly not going to jump through my butt to please you and change just so you don't feel insecure. Because I had a similar situation with, and I've spoken about this every once in a while over the years, when I was with my ex-wife, she was always constantly accusing me of cheating or potentially cheating or there'd be a girl that was expressing interest. Even if we, we had a, I remember one time we had a couple staying over our house that were friends for the weekend. And after they left, she's like, oh, she likes you. She was hitting on you and you, were, you weren't standing up to her. You weren't, I was like, what the hell are you talking about? And it's like, I didn't, maybe, you know, probably she was, but I didn't, I didn't notice it. I wasn't paying attention to it. And I said, look, this is your issue. You're needy. And you're insecure, and I'm fucking tired of this shit. I mean, I said it just like that. I was like, you need to deal with your own insecure feelings because I'm over it. And I said, knock it off. And she knew I was serious, and she never brought it up again. She never accused me of doing anything wrong or anything like that. And it was because she knew I wasn't going to put up with her BS. So as long as you set and you enforce the healthy boundaries, because if you just set a boundary and you just let her violate it, she knows that you're not serious and you're not man enough to stand up to her. And then therefore, because you're displaying weakness, she's going to do more of what's pissing you off. He says, I've seen guys in the past who have wives or girlfriends that steadily break a man down, trying to control them until they are a shadow of their former selves. Just a boring dude who sits on the couch with no hobbies or friends because he doesn't want to deal with a scolding or a drawn out fight. Drama free zone, man. This is so important because when you, whatever you tolerate in your life, you're inviting more of, you're enabling. And if you started noticing this behavior half a year ago and it's just continuing to build, you haven't set and enforced healthy boundaries. And so you've kind of created a little tyrant and you enabled her behavior because you never stood up for yourself. And now you're so many months down the road. And she's got her fingers into every part, her hands in every part of your life and trying to control it. That, like I said, it's not going to be like a one conversation you're going to have with her. And then you're going to be able to take your power back and everything will be fine. You're going to have to stand up to her and put her in her place and tell her how things need to be going forward. And she'll probably violate those. It might be a few days or a few weeks. But she's going to keep doing it because you've allowed her to get away with it for six months. And so that might... 
you might end up deciding that you're going to go away for a weekend and not take her and go do something with your friends or your family or whatever. It's like, you can get upset, but it's like, I'm going to go do it. And I'm going to go hang out with my friends because you're suffocating me. It's like, I need to be my own man. I love you. I'm loyal to you. I'm faithful to you. But your attitude needs to change because this ain't working for me. And if she knows you're serious, because remember, the strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it. And when you set and enforce healthy boundaries, especially when she's jumping all over your shit for no reason, just because she's insecure and needy, she's going to have to fix that or else she's not going to be able to go the distance with you. And she might not be able to. We, we don't know that yet. We don't know how she's going to react to this. She might say yes and she might not be able to control herself. And it might just become such a problem over the next year that eventually you just had enough and you dump her and break up with her and move on. That's why it's so important to set and enforce healthy boundaries. Because otherwise you're, you're creating this problem. You're throwing gasoline in the fire without really realizing it. She gets a huge chunk of my time to the point where I feel it's detrimental to my life, my purpose, and any sort of friends or social structure I have outside of her. That sentence right there, you should definitely tell her that exact sentence. I feel it's detrimental to my life, my purpose, and any sort of friends or social structure I have outside of you. Tell her just like that. You're making me unhappy treating me this way. It's causing me to want to spend less time with you. And I know you love me and you want to spend more time with me. But when you behave this way, I just want to get the fuck away from you. Sorry if that hurts your feelings, but that's where I'm at. And I'm not happy with it at all. He says, I love her a lot, but the question is, do I stick around and try to make things work or move on to someone less controlling and easier to get along with? I feel like now I know the answer, but I wanted your opinion. Well, you got to set and enforce the healthy boundaries. And if she continually violates them, no matter how many conversations, you, know, you have several conversations with her over the next several weeks or a month or two, and she doesn't change, then I'd dump her. I wouldn't put up with it. And she'll probably come back, oh, I promise I won't do it again. It's like... You take her back, she might be good for a few weeks or a few months, then she'll go right back to that same behavior. It's, you're you're going to have to see what she does. But the most important thing is you can't hold her accountable 9 out of 10 times. It has to be 10 out of 10 times, 5 out of 5 times. You can't be hold her accountable the first four times she does it and hold her feet to the fire and the boundaries, and then the fifth time you let her slide. Because as soon as you let her slide... Just like a child, she's going to take an inch because you let her get away with it because you displayed weakness. You went back on your word. So that's really super critical important. So I'd say give it 90 days. See how she does. And if she just still, you know, she gets good for a little while and keeps going back, then I would break it off with her and start dating other women because she's just not going to be... Some people aren't capable of it. Some people are just simply not going to respect you because they got so many other issues and that's not your problem that's their problem just like what i talked about with my ex-wife i was like i literally said this is your problem this is your issue and you need to deal with it i'm not dealing with your neediness and your insecurity and i resent you accusing me of doing something wrong because you're insecure and i don't appreciate it and if they know you're serious and they're happy and healthy and have a good self-esteem they'll respect you and if they belong to the streets, if they're a lunatic, if they're a mess, if they have no self-control, it's not your job to fix or save them. I know it's harsh, but you're not going to be happy because all you got to do is look at your friends. Look what happened to them. They got totally assimilated. And as you said, they're a shadow of their former selves. And those guys are miserable. We all know people that are like that. They're in unhappy marriages or in unhappy relationships with their girlfriends and they're too much of a bitch to do anything about it and you don't want to be one of those guys because <laughs> you're miserable it sucks you feel sad for those guys but they don't have the balls to stand up for themselves because they're too afraid to leave and go find somebody else so if you've got a question a challenge or a situation you'd like to get my help with go to understandingrelationships.com click the products tab at the top of your screen and book a coaching session with yours truly until next time, I will talk to you soon.